All right, so explain Uber. So basically, Each bottle is individually and numbered. And the rest are Understood that part, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no bottle, hopefully, is different than the other. Okay, yeah. 1539 is as good as one, and yeah, yeah. 3720. So you call those people up and say, we unfortunately, you bought the last 1539 you had. <laughs> okay. Can you make some 2000, more 2007? No, we can't make any more 2007. Yeah. That's the other one we get, too. Okay, so what's in this wine? So explain Uber this wine. is a co-fermentation of all seven vineyards of Syrah that I, that I work with. Uh, but each of those seven vineyards, five of them have two different clones, and three, two of them have three different clones. So we're talking about 18 different picks of Syrah that come into the winery. And what we do is that each pick comes in, we, we fractionalize that one little pick and put it in the Uber blend, like a tenth of a ton. We put, so it, last Saturday we got the Lana de los Prados, that came into the winery. And when, when the next pick comes in, we'll take a tenth of the water off, and we'll add a tenth of a ton of so. <laughs> and then when Pulsing Canyon comes in, 877, we'll add a tenth of a ton of that. And then when uh, the second pick of a laundry comes in, we'll put a tenth of a ton of that. And then we fill up a three-quarter ton of top fermenter. We'll split that in half and fill both those up. We'll split that in half and we'll fill those up. But what you get is instead of your traditional 7 to 14 day red wine fermentation, is you get a 60 day fermentation, which is just unheard of. And of course you can't do it very much because as you know, we need Fermenter is one, you know, the reason is, I remember going to the uh, Ospice de Rhone and people ask us, um, how long do you ferment for? And he goes, seven days. He goes, well, why do you ferment for seven days? Because we need the fermenter. <laughs> you know, we got we to gotta move the grapes coming in. we got grapes yeah. coming in. So that's, so 60 days using one fermenter or four or five or six in this case is just too long. But you get the phenolic structure of the wine. You get these extremely lengthy tannins. You get a really long maceration, cold soak while fermenting, and you just get this, these rich luxury favors that, that I've never seen in one before. We started out doing it with M, some of the components of M5, and we liked the results, so we did the experiment. Yeah, is this any co-fermentation, or is this all Yeah, no, okay. M5 has a co-fermentation of, of all the non syrah varietals. It only makes up 3% of the blend, but we feel it's a very important oh, really? blend. It's 97%? Called the, it's called Genesis of M5. No, just the Genesis. Uh, so there is... You want me to hold it? I can hold it. <laughs> I, I actually have bifocals on. Also included is 3% Genesis of M5, a co-fermentation of everything but Syrah. Okay. So that that's ends up being uh, three barrels of Genesis. And this is, ends up being about six barrels of Syrah. Now, is Genesis bottled separately? Uh, no, because if I bottled Genesis separately, it would take away from the quality of M5. So I never want to take away anything from M5. M5 gets everything good. Okay. Including Grenache, which I can sell, but you'll taste the Grenache. I can sell the Grenache I buy for free for a lot of wine. All of it goes into M5. Except in 2006. Because in 2006, M5, Grenache was so good that I really felt uh, I was going to deplete my entire Syrah inventory to try and balance out the M5. Because Grenache was here. And so I needed to keep putting more and more and more and more and more Syrah to where I was going to have no single vineyard Syrah. So I took some Grenache out so I could have some Syrah.